This video will cover the concepts of layer keys and how they work. In some of my other videos for AutoCAD Architecture, I've talked about how the AEC objects, such as walls, doors, windows, and many other tools, come in automatically on layers that are preset, which means you don't have to manually rearrange everything to layers that you've created. So it really helps the process and speed with which you can uh, draw a floor plan because the layer management takes a lot less thought and planning. The layer keys are the triggers that place those objects on the layers that they end up on. Sometimes it's helpful to be able to modify those some, and in the process, you can create custom tools. For example, a, an existing wall tool that will place walls on an existing wall layer. So I'm gonna go through how the layer keys work a little and then demonstrate how you can do that. So first, just to review, when I draw a wall, it automatically goes on the A wall layer. You can always look at that in your properties palette or in the ribbon. I like to use the properties palette because I don't have to change tabs of the ribbon when I select my objects all the time. So now you can see how that's on the A wall layer. So how did it know that's the layer that it should go on and not some other layer or the current layer? Well, that's what the layer keys are doing. And it works the same way with your doors your windows, schedules, tags, AEC dimensions, and all those other AEC smart objects. So if I look at the layer key that's currently set, we can see kind of how this is doing its job. I'm gonna to go to the layers flyout at the uh, bottom of the layers panel of the ribbon, and then you have layer key styles. <clears throat> this opens the style manager and specifically takes you to the layer key styles area. So the AIA layer key style is the one that's currently set in this drawing. So if I select that on the left, then the window on the right now shows all the layer keys that are currently being applied to this drawing. So I'm going to expand and contract some of these columns so that it's a little easier to see. So you can see there's a layer key name and then there's a layer name. And then you have color, line type, and line weight, and other layer properties. So those are the things that are the most important, the layer key name, the layer name itself, and then the color, line type, and line weight. So in the process, you can also decide what line weight you want to be for that A wall layer that the walls are going on as the walls are drawn. <clears throat> so I can sort by either layer key or by layer name by hitting the heading at the top. So if I just click on layer key, and uh, now it's sorted to where layer wall will be at the bottom. So there's that wall layer key with a wall being the name of the layer, the color, the line type, and the line weight. So if I wanted my walls to be darker, I could set this to be a darker line weight. And then uh, I would update that in the template that gets used for when I start projects and then that would make all of my walls darker on future projects. This is using the AIA National CAD standard um, layer system. So if I sort by layer name, you can see that a little easier. You always have a prefix that stands for the discipline, such as A for architectural, C for civil, E for electrical, G for general, I for interiors, etc. And then you have a, a main category such as floor objects or um, annotation related objects like for sections, walls, etc. And then you have a minor category after that. If you want to make a new layer key and kind of follow the same process, you can use the button with the three dots next to the layer name. Because when you hit that, you can see how it has your discipline designator, your major, and then options for minor categories under that. So if I wanted to use the same idea, but make a custom layer key, I could hit the three dots here and see the list of predetermined values for those categories. So let's go ahead and make one for existing walls. So I'm gonna do add, and the name for the layer key, I'm gonna do um, on all caps to be consistent. I'll call it uh, wall existing. The exact name for this, if this is a custom layer key, doesn't matter that much as long as I keep track of what it is so that I can apply it to the tools in a minute. So I can hit OK. Now let me find where that went. So now I can change the layer. So in this case, I'm going to kind of use my own 
uh, layer naming system that follows the same concept of a wall and then existing. So you can see how I'm following the same idea, a for architectural, w wall for the major category and existing for the minor. You have to think about when you name your layers, how do you want things to sort? Because really that's what this is all about. For example, if I have five layers of existing things, so like existing walls, existing glazing, existing doors, things like that, do I want those to sort together where the, all the existing things are grouped? Or do I want them to sort with similar object types, like all of my walls together, my doors together, glazing together? Because if I want them all to sort with the existing stuff together, then I would put the existing in front of the word wall, so it would say a existing wall. Because then when I have a existing door, a existing wall, a existing glass, those would all be sorted and grouped together in my layer naming, in my layer list. If I want them to sort by object type, then I would put the wall first. So you have to be very specific and careful in how you name things based upon what makes the most sense for where you're working. Choose a color, something other than white is always best. I'm going to leave it on continuous line type and I'll make the line weight something in the medium range so that it's lighter than my new walls. Now you can also add a description there. So I'll put existing walls and that should do it. I'm not going to worry too much about my overrides for right now on the end. So I'm going to hit OK. And then uh, now I need to apply that to a tool such as in the tool palette. So I'm going to make a copy of a wall tool that's already here, like stud4. Copy. I right clicked on it and hit copy. And then I can right click and hit paste to make a new version of the same tool. And now I right click on it and go to properties. And that allows me to get into uh, how this tool is working. So now I can call that existing walls. Change my description. I can decide what style is being applied to this tool. In this case, I'm going to use the standard one because it's going to probably work with uh, walls of vari various thicknesses. So I would want that to be the standard style. You have the option of specifying a CAD file where that style is being pulled from. Um, if it's a standard out-of-the-box style, you can leave it on the default. But otherwise, if you've made up your own styles, you may not want to have them all loaded in your template all the time. So you can have them pulled in from a specific CAD file. Um, I can change various other options here. But the main thing I want to do is choose the layer key. So I'm going to click on that field. And then that pops up with all the layer keys that are in this drawing. So I can choose my wall existing layer key and then hit OK. So now I have the basic settings set up for that tool on my tool palette. I can hit OK. And then once that's done thinking, now I can use my new tool. So I can click on that and draw a new uh, wall there. And then when I select it, you can see how it's on my new layer that I made, a wall existing. And it's also using the color and the line type and the line weight that I have assigned. So it's easy to make new tools on your tool palette that way. The other option that you may want to do if you get serious about making tools is to keep them also on your content browser. You can access that from your ribbon by hitting the little flyout at tools content browser. And then go to the category that applies to the tools that you're creating, like walls and then a particular category within that. You can also make new categories at the lower right. So if you were making a bunch of custom tools, you could create your own. And then uh, once you hit a specific category, <clears throat> if you have a custom tool that you made in your tool palette, you can copy paste it into the content browser by right clicking and copy. And then in the content browser, right click and paste. That's how I added the existing wall tool here. So this keeps all of your wall tools in one place. There's a lot more tools here than there are on the tool palettes. So this is kind of your overall home for all tools. And then if you needed to, you could um, copy it or drag it back to the tool palette later if something happened to your tool palette. So that's always a good idea if you're making a lot of custom tools. Um, the other thing to consider when you're working with layer keys, uh, if you hit your layers fly out on the ribbon, um, you see select layer standard. This defines which layer key is currently applied to this drawing. 
you can see there's a few other choices, but AIA is the normal version for AutoCAD architecture. The other option you do have is you can have it um, automatically pull from a different CAD file, and that's listed at the top of this tab. Um, so if you want to have one CAD file uh, somewhere on a server in a company that had the master layer key version, you could do that. It's not necessarily a requirement if you use a template and you have that layer key defined in the template file. So that's kind of the basics of how layer keys work. So you can make your own and then uh, define them for any objects and any tools that you want. If you want to change a layer key that is already established, then usually it's pretty easy to find the layer key that you want just by looking through the list of layers and the list of the layer key names that are here. And the easiest way to find something is to sort by the heading um, that you want up at the top.